top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day, everybody. It is March 17th, 2020. This is Finzix. I am Mr. Finn, coming to you live from uh, my home office uh, here in Northam. So, what I would like to do today, number one, is highlight one of my students who uh, was not on the Google Doc, and yet saw the introductory video, sent me a, a note about it, so I hooked that person up with the link and the Google Doc. So sorry I didn't get that right the first time, so Brianna, nice job. You are officially the student of the day today. We got a couple things for you today. Just wanted to uh, get a little bit of uh, brevity to our current situation. I actually did make a Google form, uh, getting a little bit of uh, friendly wagering on the COVID-19 outbreak. So here's what I have. I have an over-under, over-under on COVID-19. Our district uh, claims that we will be back in school on April 5th. So if you are taking the under of the COVID-19 outbreak, you are saying, yes, we'll be back in school on April 5th. Um, or that week, the week of April 5th. If you are taking the over for the COVID-19 outbreak, you are saying that we will not be back in school on that week. So whatever that Monday is, I believe that's April 5th, uh, you are taking the over if you're saying we'll not be back in school on that day. Got a good question in from saw a couple of students uh, earlier uh, regarding the speed of electrons. Here is the question, something akin to this. Why do batteries not run out immediately when you connect it into a circuit? I thought that the electrons travel at the speed of light. Because when you flip on a switch, the lights go on immediately. Hmm. Great question. Great question. Let's have a little think about that. Okay, guys. Here's the question written out. If a circuit works immediately when a switch is closed, why does it take so long for the battery to not run out when you hook it up? An answer to the question is, aren't the electrons traveling at the speed of light? Hmm. Did you have a little think about that? All right, well, the best thing I can do is talk to you about uh, being at a stadium. Have you ever been to a stadium where you uh, have been part of the human wave? And the human wave is one in where we raise up our arms and come back down and we go around the stadium. That's called human energy. Maybe we're sending our wave energy around Court of America Park or Ford Field or any other circular type of stadium. So when people come around here, they all get up and they come back down. That's the human wave. So the wave is running around the stadium. It might take several seconds for that to happen. I don't know. Uh, maybe eight seconds, ten seconds for the stadium to, or wave to go around the entire stadium. But if you or I were to get up out of our seats, walk to the concourse, and move around the entire concourse of the stadium back to our seats again, that might take a while to do, especially if there's a whole bunch of people in the concourse. Like, let's say it's halftime of a football game or a basketball game. Those two situations kind of uh, represent what's going on in the electric circuit. So... If you all get up out of your seat and you go to the concourse, and there's all kinds of people in the concourse at halftime, and you're walking around the stadium, you're bumping into other people, and you're trying to, it takes a long time for you, the individual, to get around the stadium by yourself and come back to where you're seated. But your wave energy, you and the human wave, you could make it around that stadium in eight to 10 seconds. The wave energy. So think of it like this. Tiny little electrons are bumping into other electrons randomly. Well, if you stick an electric field in that, then the movement isn't so random. So the electrons are kind of migrating in a certain spot from negative all the way to positive for the battery circuit, would be crashing into other electrons on their way to trying to get to the positive terminal. This creates electron energy. And that energy travels the speed of light. When we flip on the light, it's the energy of the electrons bumping into one another that actually travels the speed of light. 
that's the energy that we get to use in the form of light or energy for any of our appliances. But the actual electrons themselves do not travel very fast. They actually travel relatively slow, on the order of about 0.01 centimeters per second. Have a little think about that. 0.01 centimeters per second. What? Bada boom, bada bing. Who's talking about? We're talking about taking several hours to go the distance of about one meter. Several hours to go one meter at this distance. In this way, a battery in your car or a battery in just a simple circuit might actually last several hours, many hours, before a multiple of those electrons reach the other terminal and render the battery useless. Hmm. Interesting. So to wrap up, guys, just talking a little bit about speed of electrons in a circuit. Uh, electrons themselves travel, or travel very, very slowly, while their energy travels the speed of light. And their energy, their collision energy, is what we're using uh, when we turn on devices. So uh, make sure you guys get a chance to check out the Google Classroom. Got a couple things on there. A worksheet for tomorrow entitled 34.1, and I'll address Ohm's Law starting tomorrow. So have a great St. Patrick's Day. If there's anything you need to get me, you can either email me or you can just submit it to Google Classroom and I'll have it uploaded uh, within the 24-hour period or so. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.